Hello guys and welcome to number 10, the 10th episode here of How to Go Pro. Today it's going to be featuring the adapting. It's been quite a while since we have been uh, doing like one of these episodes that's been because I'm dismantling my PC, cannot have a little nice trip back home to Sweden. Uh, but this is going to be the last episode. So if you're new to How to Go Pro, hopefully you aren't by now, but it's this, uh, it's this, it's this series where we just sit down and we, we talk about what it really takes to go pro and we we kind of try and get a, a lot of different angles and opinions on it we've talked with hinderman we've talked with organization owners we've talked with coaches players retired players and so on so this is the last episode i've also asked some of you guys to uh, ask some questions since it's the last episode and uh, i'll make sure i ask some of them to 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 Kenneth as well so first of all my teammate the, the king adapting is on here with me today and uh, first of all Kenneth, how how are you doing today no, I'm doing good, man. Thanks. That's nice. How about yourself? Ah, chilling. It's been a pretty good day. A bit busy. Yeah. I think right yeah. now we're 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 planning a trip to Madrid here in the weekend. It's gonna be pretty sick. But that's mm. it. Um. So as I start off every single episode, I'm gonna start it off with you as well. Can you talk to me a bit about your history in Smite? Like how you how did you get into the game? What is your competitive history? Uh, just like if you have some cool stories or something. Feel free to like yeah, tell them. Uh, yeah. So I got into the game by my tribes teammates actually. Mm -hmm. So I used to play on a team called Flamboyant and Tribes, and as Smite was starting to like get bigger, and Tyrus was like uh, starting to shift a lot of their support towards Smite, mm -hmm. and like tribe support was slowly getting like less and less, less updates, less patches. Um, so we decided to try it out, and they're like, "Yeah, let's let's all try it together and see what it's all about." And we played some arena, and then I never stopped playing. Yeah, and that was about it. When uh, when was that? When was that? Like was that all the way back old school? Or? That was in January 2014. I remember because we were playing on New Year's, so I think I started on the very first of January 2014. So that was that, that was the closed beta, or closed beta, right? Or open beta, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, it was just before the launch tournament, yeah. so whatever. And then and that must have been. And 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 did it's like do do we know? Do I know any of your teammates? Or did they not like stay with the game at all? Nah, I don't think he's all them. No, it's not like a fucking lobster or something. What's one of them? The professional. No, no, player. no. It's no. Uh, it's no. Smite pros I know. I've seen the Smite team at least. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so so starting to play the game, like you just kind of get the hang of it. What what I like, got you so interested in it? Because obviously you must you you spend like a bunch of hours on it. I don't even know what the attraction was. <laughs> it's just because I'd been I used to play a lot of tribes, right? In mm -hmm. the same amount that I used to play Smite. Like I get home from school and I just play tribes all day. Um, and eventually it started kind of getting boring for me because I'd done it for so long, and you know. It was just getting repetitive, so I started picking up another game, and, and I tried a bit of League of Legends. So I wasn't that big of a fan because of the the view mm -hmm. or the perspective that you play from. So Smite was kind of the perfect mixture because it kind of felt a bit like an FPS game, but in third person, and it was also like the strategy from MOBA, and like I loved the, having the skill shots and everything. Yep. So, so, so moving forward from like actually enjoying the game, what was your first uh, like really competitive experience you got you had? Well, I got picked up to play for IA5, mm -hmm. and that was like in the middle of the SWC qualifiers. So I think in like week eight or something, I had one week to scrim, and then we played the SWC qualifier games. And I mean, didn't go amazing, but didn't go horrible either, I guess. Yeah, so but yeah, I just I basically just played. I was just playing in ranked for fun, you know. Like, <laughs> I never really thought of going pro. I was kind of thinking of like joining a team for fun, but I never thought I would join any like high tier teams. And then, yeah, they just asked me to try out for them, and I got the position. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, uh, moving on from, uh, I think this is one of the stories we are all very familiar with, with how like kind of Panfera formed and which later become became 
Epsilon and then Panfera again and then Energy Red or something like that. Mm -hmm. And obviously mm -hmm. Energy Now. How how was the ride? Like a lot of a lot of people always talk about how Rafa kind of put together the team. What 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 was this like story behind like uh, Panfera from your, your viewpoint? Like how was that put uh, together? It was, it was all Rafa. Rafa did everything. <laughs> we just four brainlets that he just controlled. Um, no, well, it was just a, it was, I guess it was Emil and Rafa at first coming together and like forming a team. And then, um, slowly we became the like roster with me, uh, Dimmi, Yamin, Emil, Rafa. Mm -hmm. And then we just, I don't know, we were just five, we were just a team, you know, like we talked to each other. It wasn't like someone was controlling everything. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of how we played, we just always discussed everything with each other, and and then we always knew we had the potential to get, you know, really good. So we just stuck with each other and just played our best and made sure to uh, resolve issues when they occurred. Yep. Well, one of the things I've always been like impressed about from like the very start about you guys is like from my previous team's experience, right? Like. We were friends to a certain extent, but whenever like we would be done with scrims, you know, everyone would just say bye and go and do their own thing. Sure, maybe if 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 we just started like sometimes we'd play like a few PUBGs together or something like that after scrims. But yeah. It w the few times we actually like entered you guys Discord back on Oboy, oh um, yeah. I, I I always saw like after scrims like all five or six of you were like always in the in the team speak, and I know it's it's kind of the same now, right? Like. After scrims are done, we always kind of chill, just just talk, yeah. you know. I, I'd never really had that on another team, and I think like that's uh, that's uh, a big thing. And that actually leads me into one of the questions um, I got from one of the guys. I guess I can kind of sneak that in here. Uh, someone asked, "How important is the personal relationship with your teammates when it comes to playing together uh, as a team as might?" Well, I think it's really really important. I mean, you gotta have to be friends with your teammates. I mean. If you're gonna, you go, you're trusting them with everything when you play, mm -hmm. and you wanna have be on good terms on the playing grounds or the <laughs> battlegrounds. <laughs> the battlegrounds, and yeah. you know, often, yep. Like it's like with us, it was always a thing. I guess like we used to watch movies a lot of the time on like off the screams or before. You know, we just group up, watch a movie, some watch some horror movie or something. You know, just chill <laughs> with each other and just just create like a strong bond and because yes yeah, it's, it's just something that's really valuable i think and just feeling like the people you play with is the people you want to be around and hang out with is i think it's really important at least mm -hmm. yep yeah well i agree with you also just like for me at least like being able to live in the house with them and Yamin wouldn't really be a possibility if we didn't like each other obviously and yeah, I think, of like, course. I think like it's it's so important that on a teammate that that like you can uh, you you're, you're good friends, right? Because like good friends can talk about like problems without being scared that someone is gonna get like offended or stuff like that, you know? Which yeah. It like I was like back I was I was good friends with everyone on the bay, but on some of my previous teams, I've sometimes had like the fear: Am I gonna fuck up the team or now if I'm gonna call someone out because we're just not on that that same level of respect? I do think one thing that helps out as well a lot is like a coach when it comes to like certain issues like the... well yeah like uh yeah, sorry yeah just withdraw right like at least if something occurs right it, it I, that's that's one tip if you can and you're trying to be an inspiring pro or just a pro team team try try and get a, a coach and <laughs> it, it honestly like the coach kind of has to be this good friend of the team as well right because if, if the coach is like in just a random guy that's going to come in and say, yo, that sucks, that sucks, that sucks, that's kind of weird. Whereas like we have Ro and we're always fucking joking with Ro, you know, about whatever it is. If it's uh, beer money or him us sending us videos of kangaroos and stuff, making us scared of going to, to uh, Australia. Um, but yeah, after after like uh, the Panfera times, obviously... Uh, that was actually kind of crazy that year, because like you guys, you didn't even qualify for the spring split. 
you got knocked out, right? You played relegations and you absolutely aced rally rallies back then. Then you had like a mediocre summer split, right? And then fall split, you just kind of won everything. Yeah, Rafa got banned in summer split. <laughs> really? So, it kind of, yeah, like we we were actually doing all right. I think we had we had a really strong possibility of uh, making LAN. Mm -hmm. But Rafa got banned and then we had to play with Sanjo or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I do know how it feels, out, unfortunately. that's like the worst thing when uh, one of your players gets banned on your team, shout out to Sasho. Yeah. <laughs> that was fucking rough man, <laughs> Hope, yeah. hopefully we can, uh, do, you, when, do you know when they're gonna do the next uh, audit locks? <laughs> no. Don't you remember when we got that, that was the funniest thing, so like all of us pro players, we got a message. Yeah. Like it was like clearly a copy pasta, and uh, we were we were all talking right uh, at that time. Like we were sitting together, and I don't know if it, it was like Emily too, Emil first, and he said like, guys, Vinny sent me this message, and it says like if you're receiving this message, you have you need to pick up like your communication smart because you've been toxic and so whatever, and like okay, we were all laughing, making fun of Emil, and then a, a few minutes later, Yamin gets that same like a uh, copy pasta that says if you're receiving this message and then we're like aha okay of course it's emil and yaman and then we ask like you guys to check like uh, Kenan and maniac and they have it as well and i'm like haha of course i'm not gonna have it and a few minutes later i, I received that as well right from uh, <laughs> from uh, from Vinny's. so that's how we all ended up getting getting the the hot warning of our in-game communication we have to clean up our act coding uh Vinny. Hopefully there's not going to be more of those audits. Just imagine like... Hopefully. We're it's just, not going to be a ban. We're just gonna all going to get banned, you know, for like for like a month or something. That would be... Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, some some <laughs> games I can be... I can get a bit frustrated. <laughs> Me as well. Talking about frustration, Kenneth, how, how do you handle that? Close the game. Close the game? Go watch TV. Yep. That's how I handle it these days, at least. <laughs> I mean, like, well, if I play, like... Because before I used to just play a lot, mm -hmm. and I would just play, 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 and even if I started getting like annoyed, I'd keep going, and then like it would just build up. Like it wouldn't just happen every day, right? Like it was just my like anger mm -hmm. would just build up over like weeks or something, and then after like one week, two weeks, three weeks, like eventually I just burst out and start raging on stream. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, like, people thought was fun, so I was alright with it, but then, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's getting a lot of slack for it as well, so I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm just gonna stop playing when I start getting annoyed. And yep. I mean, it's gonna work. I do get that. So. That's why I stream like half an hour these days. <laughs> you do the classic Emil stream now, you know? Just you're yeah. like on for like one game and you just shut it down in the middle. I like it. Pretty um, much, yeah. The, obviously, the opposite of frustration is probably like motivation, right? And what what keeps you motivated as a pro player? And like, what would your advice be to someone that has struggling is like struggling with motivation, which could lead like maybe like it's rank frustration, right? That X player is frustrated with his rank games, and how how do you stay motivated? Well, for me, I just like my motivation is literally just winning uh, in competitive, like. Obviously in ranked it's a bit different because in ranked you don't necessarily have control to obviously like you can play to the best of your capabilities in rank mm -hmm. and you may still win or lose or whatever but uh, like you can't win every rank game that's just the way it is and you just have to look at it sometimes you're gonna go on winning streaks sometimes you're gonna have to go on losing streaks and the thing to remember is that you know even if you're going on through a losing streak eventually it's gonna be all right and you know it's it it's only a game in the end like mm -hmm. it's not gonna kill you you're not gonna look down back at it five years in the line and be like oh man i can't believe we lost that rank game <laughs> just just try and think of it like all right if it's not gonna matter in a couple of years then why should i bother don't be too upset about it now you know like for an hour or two that's fine but then just let it go and just go in with a new mindset Mm -hmm. um and for competitive it's it's a bit it's entirely different though when it comes to competitive because my motivation is just to win and every time we lose you know you always get like a bit more you can get more motivated and also more a bit demotivated if you put in a lot of work and you're still losing it's like oh man like it's all for nothing but once you start seeing progress 
And once you start performing better, your team is performing better, everything's going better, it, it, it's just really, that's just what keeps you going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone in the SPL should be wanting to holding that uh, hammer at the end of the year. And yeah, of course. That's, that's the goal. And, you know, that's the mo main motivation, just holding that hammer up once again. Mm hmm all right, so moving a bit back now, um, when I, this was another, I thought, really good question that someone asked, um, was there a certain moment you realized you were playing at the professional level before like actually looking at, at yourself as like a pro player? Like when, when, what was that defining moment for you where you're like, oh yeah, I might be pro now, like when it comes to smite? Mm. Well, so I played for like, when I started playing for i5 and stuff and like potato boys, I kind of just felt like a ranked player, you know, like I had no idea about the competitive scene and like it was a, like, I play competitive in tribes, right? But it, it felt like a whole different world to be playing in Smite and different sort of like, everything's just different with the comms, how everything works mm -hmm. and just having to relearn everything. Um, and so when I was playing for like i5 and Potato Boys, I definitely didn't feel like, oh, like I'm a pro now, yeah. you know, I just felt like an amateur you know, rank jungler just playing, <laughs> playing for fun mainly. Um, and then I guess when we were Epsilon and we became Epsilon in like summer split, I guess I'm like, all right, I kind of start understanding the game now. Mm -hmm. And because before I, I didn't really understand like what I was like, I understand, understood jungle, but I understood nothing of how the game worked and like how this transition to that it was mainly just like okay how do i win my jungle role that's it mm -hmm. um but yeah now so in summer split when i started and we were playing in the pro league and we started like i was doing more shot calling and understanding the game i started feeling and you know streaming yeah and starting to build up a stream and everything i started to feel like okay like i'm actually sort of a pro now mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense um so one thing I actually wanted to talk to you about already, but someone also kind of formed this into a question. I'll rephrase it a bit, but he asked that you did the constant praise of you that you got and like, especially in season two and season three ever like get into your head. And I'm, I want to rephrase it a bit. So like, how do you deal with like developing a, a positive ego rather than like a negative ego? Cause one of the things that at least when I, I talk like with you and with the, the, the boys, like, it, it, like the thing that I hear a lot is like, I think like Emil said it in a really nice way. Like he said, I think Kenneth is the best player of like managing his ego, if that makes sense. Like he, he's, he's probably the one that has gotten like the most praise and yet has mm -hmm. like the most respect, you know, like how, how, how do you not let, let all the praise get to your head and just be like, oh yeah, I'm so much better and, and like go into negative routines and stuff like that. Well, I mean, the the way I look at it is like, I mean, I'm I'm grateful for the praise I've gotten, you know, I'm very mm -hmm. thankful for that, but I don't, like, I've never had it, uh, when I look at it, I never look at it, it's like, oh, I'm above others. I look at, like, every other, like, pro player, you know, they're, my, they're all my equal, mm -hmm. and so I all have, I have respect for all pro players and everyone, and, like, especially everyone on my team, like, I never think on my team that, like, oh, uh like i shouldn't listen to him or like <laughs> like oh I'm, I'm i'm better than this guy i'm better than that guy like i'm always trying to be open to criticism i mean like it like, i still do have an ego right but it's in the you know it's in like my i think it's a different sort of ego it's like can i if someone would discuss stuff? something with uh, sure. yeah like one thing you do a lot which i have never experienced before with any player and i've been playing with quite, quite a bit different players now you have that tendency like late game where sometimes you just go i'm gonna go for solo kill guys and i think that's like the confidence you play with and yeah. you, always, you always manage to pull off the solo kill anyway right like you it's like 98 percent of the time you're gonna get that kill i've never yeah. been with a player that's had that much like confidence in in his own skill and i think just mm. your ability to use that in a good way is like really impressive and which is also why I think like you make a lot of those shiny plays, right? We're just straight up out playing people because you actually believe in yourself. I think that was just like a little quick example of how sure you can have an ego, but you can use it to your strength. 
I think yeah, that's like yeah. one of the things you're really good at, at, like trading those opening plays for your team, right? Yeah. No, I, I definitely do have confidence. Like when I play, I always play like, I never play and have the mindset that anyone I'm playing against is better than me. Mm -hmm. Because if you ever play like that, you're already at a disadvantage. Uh, you, like you, you'd need to believe in yourself. Like it's, and that's something I learned from sport. Because I used to watch a lot of motocross, and I would see like when riders um, were struggling, like the top riders could be like really struggling with their confidence, and they'd be like top of the like constantly top three usually. Mm -hmm. And then when they when they were lacking confidence, they would be in like the you know twentieth place. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they got like a, a bit of confidence, you could always see how much it changed in their performance because they'd go from like finishing twenty. To like being top five and then top five starting to like run for the wins and so with smite i always just had the mindset like it's all right when i'm playing um i'm playing with the, the mindset that whoever i'm fighting against if there's ever a 1v1 ever anything i'm smarter than them um i have the I have better mechanics i'm better um but then like outside of the game you know i'm not gonna be like oh you know i'm yep. so much better than you it's just mm -hmm. like when I, when I play i just Go in with confidence and fuck up, fuck up, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so one thing I wanted to ask you as well is like, um, what do you think is like the thing that people underestimate the most about being professional? Like not in, in Smite in general, like that people don't actually know about? Uh, the pressure, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure and like it, for different people, it's different, you know, like. Mm -hmm uh because some people will like struggle with playing on stage or whatever or like in front of people or some people will struggle with you know like some you'll see some people some pros uh they'll get really upset on on twitter or you know maybe even reddit or whatever when people, they get criticism from casters or other other people mm -hmm. and then it's like also the you know you have the pressure of winning not only for yourself and your team but like for income and so it's it's a lot of pressure and it can be very exhausting to constantly be playing with this pressure mm -hmm. um and i think that can just be really draining and burn people out from from the pros in a way mm -hmm. um and it's 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 also tough with uh, like time management because you do need to invest a lot of time into the game and especially scrims and you know for not for everyone but for a lot of people like their social life might suffer a bit because it becomes harder to do like fun events with friends like go to dinner because you have scrims or like you know just hang out in general because you're busy with spl or you know mm -hmm. so there's some sacrifices definitely but do you think it's worth it at the end of the day oh yeah i mean i wouldn't be here if i didn't but yep of course. All right. The, the thing, the thing about me, or the way I view it is, it's only worth it if I really try my best to be my best and have my team be the best they can be. Because you know, we're running on a what? What do you say? Like. We don't have unlimited amount of time, you know, like you do in like work in construction or wherever where you can just work for 40 years. Like yeah. we have a couple of years that's going to be our golden years. And when I look back when I'm old, I want to know that, you know, at least I did my best when I when I could. Yep. So I think that kind of moves into another question I want to ask is someone asked, what do you guys think of the, the like the current state of Smite? And let's look at it in a, a bit more of a competitive light. A lot of people have asked, is it actually worth it? trying to go pro now like is no. it, am, am i gonna oh, is smite gonna be dead as a lot of people always say oh yeah, smite is dying um by then what, what do you think do you think like smite we're, we're, we're in our life cycle with smite are we well i think it depends more on high risk than anything i mean i'm not sure how the player base is looking if it's growing or decreasing but I definitely, I still think it's like a really, really good game, and especially in season five. So, I think it would be a shame if the game died. But I think you know the lifetime of Smite is based on uh, 
on Hyrus and how they handle the pro scene and their esports department because you know we really help expose the game and esports is such a is like a really a growing sport at the moment so mm. it's really important for games to have an esports scene yeah unless they're just completely casual games like Minecraft or something where Minecraft PvP dude fucking world championships yeah <laughs> imagine that what what i've been thinking about smite is that i don't think smite is necessarily gonna die within the mm-hmm. next three or four years however i do think the risk for smite is that it's gonna stagnate a lot right i think it uh, what i'm scared about is that smite is gonna stagnate with the current format format we have now where you get a pretty decent base salary and world's price build is pretty big but i'm scared that it's not gonna grow beyond that because I, no, I that's what I mean. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think that Smite is gonna die. Because as you mentioned, esports are just growing. But what I'm yeah, so, yeah. Uh, if, if that's gonna affect Smite in a positive way, because like esports are just getting more money and more players in general, and just like yeah. So, but what I'm scared is that Smite is gonna be overtaken by like new games, you know, like all the time. Like I'm scared. You, we the last three years, what we have seen is just Smite has just decreased on the Twitch viewer like as games and stuff like that. So I don't think you should be scared that Smite is going to die. I do think that if you want to go pro in Smite, you can definitely still do it. But you, you shouldn't, unless Hyrus do some, some really good changes, you shouldn't be prepared to play like big events as the CSGO events or something like that and traveling like 200 days a year. I do think that, that Smite is, 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 a, is a pretty relatively easy esports to get in compared to like CS or League or something like that. But 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 just to to like cement it for once, I don't think Smite is gonna die, and I do think if you want to get in Smite esports, you have a chance. Still, and you can probably be pro in two years, and who knows where the game is in two years. But I do also think like, obviously, again, you have a really good point that if Hyrus are gonna make some poor decisions, that's also gonna influence Smite in a negative way. Whereas if they make good decisions, of course, that's gonna influence it in a in a in a positive way. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if they if they do something bad with the esports scene, where like the pro players are basically like, no, this is just like, you know, like for some reason the pro players wouldn't want to play anymore, or like a lot of them's like, no, it's not worth it at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, which is completely possible. I mean, but that's only if Hyrus play their cards wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I just think it's dependent on that, and then. How easy it is to become to become a pro in spite is like uh, in the first place if your only mindset when you play the game is oh i, I just want to become a pro i just want to become a pro you're probably not gonna make it to be honest because i think most pros um just played the game for fun and then eventually it led to them getting good yeah and like you gotta have the balance where you're you're having fun learning to improve Mm -hmm. um so you always have to be like constructive with yourself and like because when you especially when you're just going through rank um and ranked is like the biggest way to sort of show off your talent because good ranked players do get noticed but they they are pretty rare um where someone new just shows up and is really good in ranked and then eventually gets picked up for a pro team and gets taught you know gets on the ropes um, but yeah, you just gotta have the mix of wanting to improve and having fun while doing it and not just one or the other, because if you're just having fun and not trying to improve, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. And if you're not enjoying it, then it's, it's just going to be a grind. That's not going to get you anywhere either. Yep. Okay. So that, I think that kind of leads into like a bit of a a bit down of an, another road but i had one more question i wanted to include to you from everyone who's been asking thank you for asking it's uh, if you had to choose between having amazing ac- mechanics and little but okay knowledge and little but okay mechanics but amazing knowledge of smite like which one would you choose oh that's a good question actually um the thing is it kind of depends on what role you're playing i'd say mm-hmm. um because like Mechanics is important, definitely, but in like competitive, like, you know, a lot of the time you can just rely on uh, going off setup and so like, or just doing this and that, like, 
it doesn't need to be super spectacular, mm -hmm. but it's still important, of course. Um, whereas game knowledge, like, is I think it's dependent on like what what team you're in. Like, if you're a team with four mechanical superstars, um, then you'd want to be the person with the game knowledge because I'd say in general, like, game knowledge probably comes before mechanics, but um. It depends on how big the difference is between each other, you know, like, mm -hmm. and it also depends on the team. Because if you have, if you have a team that's already got like three or four smart, super smart players, then you might as well be the one that's really good mechanically. Mm -hmm. Then that just kind of like listens to, um, you know, what they have to say about the game and how to like set up a game plan and stuff. Yep. So yeah, it, it just depends on what your role in the team is, mm -hmm. mainly. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Ooh, I don't know. I think I definitely think that it's easier. I don't know. Is it? Do you think it's easier to improve mechanics or game knowledge? I kind of want to say mm. mechanics because with mechanics just... you, you can just put in the hours, but with game knowledge that's something that comes over way more time. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. I guess game knowledge is harder to acquire because if you want like true game knowledge, it's like when you start fully understanding like how every role what kind of impact they can have and like how to utilize every role to their fullest potential mm -hmm. whereas mechanics is just you know like your own sort of uh ability to either miss hit dodge shoot, or like you know yeah. counter stuff um but i th also think that like game knowledge is something that takes longer to learn where but it has a smaller I, I don't I don't know, I feel like it's easier to learn a lot of game knowledge than it is to get like super good mechanically. Because mm -hmm. um eventually you're going to plateau. You can't just keep getting better forever. Um at least that's what I think that like and you see that with some some players. Uh, maybe like old pros, you notice how uh, they've sort of stagnated and they used to be superstars, but then like, you know, they're still playing the game, but they're, they're just not really uh, becoming better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because they've sort of hit that like cap where, uh, where their like, the... individ like their, their skill just or the natural born skill or whatever. Yeah, like, it's, it's, like it's, it's, you need to, just, it just the amount of, I guess the amount of time of practice you need to put into improving like 1%, if you can use percentages, is just so much higher than it was like yeah. two years ago, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to finish off, Kenneth, with, with the question I ask everyone. What's your single best advice to someone aspiring to be pro? If you can only give them one advice. Train hard, eat well. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, best advice for someone. Wait, what's the question again? The best advice for someone aspiring to be pro, right? Like. All right. Someone... So my my best advice, just play the game and have fun with it. Yeah. And just, just, open yourself up to criticism, and if you have the ability, record your uh, footage. And then, uh, if you're unsure about something you did wrong during the game, just look back at it and be like, oh, like I shouldn't have done this. And like, you know, just try and always see what you could have done better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we'll take that piece of, yeah. piece of advice. And, and well, I, I just wanted to thank you for being on the show. Thanks for coming on. Cheers, mate. Obviously, um, I'm going to do a bit, of a, a bit of a longer outro than normal now because this is uh, the last episode of How to Go Pro. I've decided to end the show here after 10 episodes because I simply didn't think that we'd want to talk about it for 20 episodes or something like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Who knows, maybe in a year or something, uh, like six months, we, we might do an episode of season two with, with new people. But uh, that's pretty much going to make it for this show and this series. And I'm truly grateful for all the support we've gotten. It's been a major success in my mind. And 
if you guys have any feedback or anything about the show or you just want to show your appreciation just give me a comment you know i'll i'll gladly look at it and uh that's pretty much it so for the last time of this series i'm gonna say thank you so much for being on kenneth uh, and thank you to everyone that's been on the show i truly do appreciate everyone like taking the time out of the day to be on and uh yeah if you liked this series, if you liked this episode, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and press the bell. And until next time, everyone, peace out.